Hello to you and welcome to the series of discussions New Life with Rav Leitman. Rav Leitman. Hello to everyone. Hello, Nitsa Mazoz. And we're learning here from Rav Leitman how to build our lives anew, how to reformat our lives for and the connection between us and others. We're learning this between us and our couple and then we can uh, have this uh, affect also other things in life and we want to learn how to implement these things and learn how all these things in every moment of our lives and our discussion today I would like for us to start from one of the principles that talk about how to create a good connection between couples I would like to read it and then if you could Rob Lightman also explain it what it means and and then later also how to implement it in actuality between us as a couple. The principle says like through the connection and love each is included from the other. He gets richer and acquires other force strengths. The condition is that one diminishes himself compared to the other and doesn't put himself as higher than the other. I'll repeat this principle again. Through connection and love each is included by the other. He gets richer and acquires more and more forces. And the condition for this is that one diminishes himself in relation to the other and doesn't put himself as higher than the other. What does it mean in the connection between us? We talked about the two rings and how they enter in connection between each other. That each is like a circle in which a person lives and it doesn't matter and also to fill the other and to fill himself and if he fills himself by making good to the other that's called love and if he's filled by he only takes by the other then it's called hatred but in the end he wants to fill himself and here we start to work in a way that is uh, more thoughtful or we say computerized or thought wise that we're truly doing not only these calculations but we're actually making a program how we're doing this a plan and we know that we want to concede ourselves and the more I make a space in, uh, within me for my ego that I don't want to fill uh, to uh, certain special things in this way, I build a space where I can accept here, instead of my demands, the demands of the other, my wife, yes? And now this way, we each give up a little bit of their own ego in order to receive the other until there is between us a common area, <coughs> which also I gave up a little bit of myself. And in this concession, I'm, I'm giving... I'm, uh, servicing her and, and she also uh, consists uh, had a concession which she can service me and then in this common area between us where we're in agreement and mutuality and connection between us that's it this is according to the fact uh, uh, in accordance with me con conceding and received the, her desires and thoughts and the same thing she did towards me somewhat in some and uh, something not in everything right away and then this common area is called the area of connection, the area of unity. And this common desire, this common attraction, this common understanding, there's a certain agreement and a covenant and a unity, union, until love. What's love? That I want to supply the filling to her desires, and she wants to do the same to me. So maybe it's not like whole, complete love but partial and we're aware that this is something that we're keeping so that this will exist this process it says that it gives me more and more forces what forces and from who why am I getting richer from this why am I getting richer and acquiring more and more forces because according to the, 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 the degree in which you are connected to the other even in the smallest area already the rest of its area his abilities, its desires, all those things are also standing to your service, at your service. Because 
If you're in agreement in love in a certain common area, you're already not enemies. You may not agree with everything. You didn't work on that yet. Maybe those things didn't rise or awaken in you yet, because like there are certain barriers that need to be corrected, that need to be removed. But anyhow, by acquiring a certain agreement, even partial, uh, some connection, some love, support, you're already certain that he is by your side, the second person. He's already a partner. There's a condition here for this. The condition for this is that one diminishes himself compared to the other and doesn't stand himself as upper. This is called what you're talking about diminishing. Because if I diminish my desires and my des uh, thoughts, and I'm willing to accept the desires and thoughts of hers, it means that I'm diminishing myself compared to her. Nature made this, through, it helps us through having a common uh, possession. We have a common home or all the things that are there that we, we kind of really harm each other, if not, and as long as we uh, give birth to, to, to mutual children and we feel natural love to them. And then what comes out is that there is between us already a common area, even in a physical way, in a corporeal way, way an earthly way. Which, But what's demanded for us is to complete it with this common field between us that is more upper. That we concede our ego to each other and connect this way in an additional way. In our life especially, we came to such an ego that we don't care about the home or our common possessions or the common uh, children unless we build this additional area then we are spreading. According to this condition here that I need to diminish myself towards the my couple. Yes. How How is that possible? You do it on purpose in order to achieve a higher goal. For the peace at home gives you many things. It depends what we do around it. It depends on the campaign we do around this. Uh, first of all, we can explain to people how much they're earning in nerves and health and the years of life and comfort and, and every single thing. Well, that's clear. No, this is not clear. There must be a brain uh, washing here, a very strong brain. Let's say you brainwash me completely and there's already a process and I want to keep the peace at home and that's the highest goal for me. Not big things, concrete. I and her, and I'm learning here, in my lesson here with you, that I need that the condition that I will acquire from her more and more forces is if I diminish myself compared to her. Concede. No, that's not, that's you leave the diminishing. You're at least your your concessions. Are you doing a? Uh, so it's too big for you to get smaller. Let's at least. No, that's already we're talking about other cases. Okay. So let's say you just concede. Why not? Okay, to concede understood. If I see myself as smaller than someone, that's already a little bit more difficult. In internal work, we need to concede. If each wants to see in the other that there's a certain presentation of the upper force compared to him, this in a bullet, let's say, that the Creator is bending himself here towards a person, let's say, compared to the image of his wife, and towards everyone in this world, then he must diminish himself. He must make himself smaller. But here, concession. Nitsa, something else about this? Yeah, we talked about concession. This is clear. So let's move to the next principle. The next principle says like this. Each needs to pay attention all the time how he can raise the spirits of the other. About spirits, there's no person is not happy for improvement. Here, one needs to see himself as greater than the other, like a mother who cares for the the care for the wellness of her children. What do they want to tell us here? Yes, like this to make people uh, the other happy, to give them a better mood. How? Who so cares that he'll have it better? I'll I'll give you a challenge. 
I'm a person who generally I'm not a happy person. I don't laugh from jokes. Why? I don't know. That's not my nature. My kids read, uh, you know, joke uh, books, and I they tell me jokes, and I don't laugh from them. Let's say, with my partner, how would you implement this? That you need to constantly raise my mood. It could be that you're happy from seeing you know, horror movies, yeah? Then I make you happy by the, doing this. Happiness doesn't need to be that you're righteous and good uh, deeds or you're doing... No. Meaning, I try to bring you what you love. In actuality. To prepare for you what you love. To arrange for you what you like. I feel that I'm doing this and that I'm doing it for you so that you will have a good, so that you will feel comfortable. I'm giving you constantly an example. Now, I also would like to see it from you. That I don't understand. Well, what's not clear here? What, are you saying this in words? No, 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 in words, okay. Of course, in words also. We're just talking with a, with a partner and partners who are learning how to do this. They're in treatment. They understand. There are two egoists who need to improve their situation. They don't have anything to be proud of yet, other than their stupidity. We're teaching both of them how to be humans, how to be in the in the proper relationship. So each who shows this to the other gives an example to the other and can remind him, yes, this is an example. This is how we learn that we need to do this. Why is it important to raise the mood of the other uh, of the of your partner? Why is it important? We want connection. But you so this means connection can only be in a situation where there's a good a good mood. A good mood opens a person. A bad mood closes a person. So you can't be in a bad mood. You can't have a, a, a connection with others in a bad mood. Okay, you asked. Okay. Now, can I do a certain exercise here, like what he described here? But he's not such a happy kind of character. Can I discern with him, scrutinize with him in a certain process what makes him happy, what uh, thing? you don't feel it anyway? I mean, sometimes it's easier. There's people it's easy to feel, and some people it's difficult. And you just don't know what, what he wants. To that point, a woman especially. And you really don't understand so much what he wants. He also changed himself and went through changes that... So we need to play in this, that you're going down to his mood and with him as a partner to exactly what he's going through with him, you're with him. And then, when you feel that you're in the one spirit, and you're angry about one thing and truly one together and you try to look at all things like him and agree with him and justify him a hundred percent yes truly he, deserve, he deserves for you to do this to him and this to him and this is not good and this is okay and you're a hundred percent correct and truly yes there's connection now start to take him out of this Without connection, you can't come out. You have to grab onto something. That's it. Okay, Aaron? Yes. The next principle. Aren't there such things in psychology? Not exactly like this. Naturally, the action is different. Many In many situations, there's a situation that I know of a couple who's a little bit more pacific pessimistic and and she's an optimistic and and it comes to a point that her optimism uh, can, angers him this is true because it drives him crazy yeah and she's trying she's trying to, to you know because she's not doing it through the connection she's doing it for the negation she needs to come to the connection and then the place of identification to feel him and then from his place slowly with small doses Yes, this is the psychological approach. So tell me, what do we do with the fact that I see my partner in a bad mood? What happens 
maybe you're very developed and advanced people and not you and us we're going through a course I'm entering home uh, as part of this uh, course I see my wife in a bad mood you know what uh, what it creates in me I get angry I'm not identifying or anything like that I get mad maybe she's really right she had a difficult day at work and all kinds of things with the children and all that why when you come come in a bad mood you burst out and you come out and uh, get angry and, and everyone has to feel it from you on the contrary where's the when you enter a home first of all we already summarized that we agreed that you make sure that if your shoes are not in the place good there's a place for me to overcome now I'm not talking about my shoes or something like that no but we're talking this is an exercise to make sure I do that every time to see I'm giving up on my shoes so they won't be in any place at all but now we're talking about something else we're talking about the mood of my, uh, my partner it's not that I'm demanding something else this is different you're demanding a different mood and with her it's opposite same thing with the shoes it's same thing what's different you simply not uh, uh, it doesn't suit you her mood doesn't suit you how is it different go look just like the shoes what do you need to do you need to understand her and truly she has probably some you need to constantly work on the concession and to be happy to have what for but just like the shoes ah wonderful there's no shoes I'm overcoming I'll go and I'll search for them and slowly slowly and by doing this I'm benefiting and in this I'm freeing up an area in me for a deeper connection we need to give a person a way for him to uh, be paid for 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 compensated for uh, this love and this connection and something higher all of a sudden there is inside these sensations a certain upliftment a very unique upliftment inside a person and not in, not in a beast that is worthwhile to to execute what can let's go back to my home I come home to my home I see it's like a laboratory I enter home and I have a, a partner I come home and I see she's in a bad mood so this is concrete and we're gonna give an example let's say she I hear her talking on the phone and she's really uh, mad at someone I don't know who's on the other side of the call and she's criticizing him and or her and it's like sensations feelings that it's not a good atmosphere it's it's all in a spirit that it's like it's projecting to me a bad mood also that's why I'm getting angry all uh, truly this is what I'm getting angry from so now everyone knows this that he comes home he had a good spirit and all of a sudden it could be an interaction between the people at home but I know that the result is before I entered I was in a good mood I entered the home and something's going on there as if it projected to me a bad mood okay it's clear everyone knows this this is the daily now what now I constantly stand and I write everything down in my notebook I want to know what do I do here according to this principle here I don't know what do I do you go to look just like your shoes a good mood there's no good mood there you look for it what does that mean how to do it how I will do it yes of course you need to be like a psychologist now towards your partner how you approach her in a scientific way to the matter and very calculated and build a connection in her of such that will take her out of the despair out of the anger and to raise her to a different degree of life now you're entering work that of a psychologist uh, through therapist okay so this isn't big now a little bit smaller a little bit more details what will I concretely do I understood the goal now I enter a certain role of a psychologist and my job is to lurk
but you also you have greater tools than a, than a psychologist because you can come to her you can hug her and ask how are you and then how are you right away but in a, such a way a certain, first of all a little dog something that will soften her immediately already there's something in life that brings one a certain pleasure or support at least what is this what well, we're going to talk like this what's with you I don't know we're learning how to use in our daily life as a, labor, a home the laboratory for the development of a new connection for the other this I don't think I don't know is this what we're learning or not I don't know it doesn't appear to be my role to pass on this thing that's no problem we can end the course after we talked about concession and connection through the concession and love covering all transgressions and overcoming the ego and helping the other and giving the other an example how to connect with you uh, in return in all these words is everything there's nothing else to add you can see them endless all 70 years of our lives but actually there's here everything if I will read all these things it's just like uh, here read them real quick and you'll see uh, okay the last principle we were was to raise the the mood we talked about the next principle when one feels that one someone loves him and cares for his peace it awakens great happiness in him and awakens in him the same uh, attitude and big because you're working in understanding in a mutual way and understanding it's not that each is just shooting straight from his sensation that which he feels like on the other rather we're constantly wanting to build a nice family a, we're playing with something whole that we're not there yet but with hope that we will be there and therefore we're constantly showing to each other that this is still a game but an advanced game each time it's easier each time we're closer to that why does it obligate him to give in return the same attitude because this is a game and we agreed between us and the second thing that it's always like that why because if I play it right let's say your your partner is especially egoistic you deal with her really nice and there's no feedback here it says that if you relate well there's no feedback it's a sign that I'm not wise why you why not because I can play with her ego in such a way that I will turn her in some way no and good it says you're in good that if you do good it brings something bad good back good give an example one if just look at the situation if this person is dependent on dependent on something yes she's my my partner so this person is great he has big desires and they can be filled by me so what I'm the I'm the landlord here I'm the owner so it's in theory not in theory the whole problem is that we usually don't know how to start and play with this ego as much as an ego is more per of a, uh, egoistic he's more of a baby he's more of a child he's more of a box a black box that you throw something and you get a response is he, is uh, sold on this uh, ego who is a man a man who knows how to overcome it on himself and therefore you can't influence him directly you can't touch him you tell him something okay you said hurt, hurt him okay you hurt but he stands he doesn't respond right away like this immediately why because he's overcoming himself if she's such an egoist that she can't overcome herself and then you play with her like with the baby let's say you implemented this and you did some way and you showed her what something good you're relating to her in good doing good relations with her on purpose in order to show them in an 
exaggerated way with critique to see if I'm getting from her the same attitude and if not then I have what to do about this I am constantly in trying to do good but if not I'm also checking myself once again I'm doing something good I get a good response great then even better if not then I too make a, a true presentation here that's very clear so that she'll get a good relationship as long as I get a response that is mutual what it's uh, what this is how we build a coupling this is how we build the unity a connection a family what we call how, I, how do I have to do this with the children the same way it's like you're combining here to yeah for, uh, the carrot and the stick yeah but you didn't say before a concession where's the concession I'm I'm conceding myself I'm overcoming my ego and I'm working in a way that is very uh, thoughtful and uh, with the supervision according to a program yeah but you presented here and until here you said in concession to concession yeah but not just like that love you know complete love in which I awaken the other disparagement I need to show that I love that I that I concede on it for everything that I know myself I need to show this it's not complete love complete love is just do whatever you want I love you and that's it no I'm not doing this even the parents who love children so much they're not allowed to show this so what yes what do I add to this you add the din the uh, judgment to the mercy that there are two reigns here and you're and you're managing it and according to the response that's how you manage it I take on myself a goal to bring us to connection this is what I say yes and I say this to her too but in the connection that I bring us remember that I have both judgment and mercy I have love and hatred and if one doesn't work love will cover all transitions do we agree to to reveal the 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 crimes the transgressions and cover them with love or not with both of them if yes then please how do you know how to manage the uh, reins well in a family who doesn't know from 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 all the knowledge it looks like everything is getting crashed into trash so people are getting an instruction okay so in this instruction I'm declaring I take a goal on me to bring us to connection we're starting a process yes you have a, a driver's license yes are you going anywhere yes do you have a steering wheel yes how do you hold it uh, between here and there yeah ta -ta 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 -ta. so what's the problem now I'm trying to translate this parable into a it's after the feeling of the other this is the problem probably the feelings of the other so you're asking from her I want to feel you what woman doesn't want for you to feel her it's always the eternal demand or complaint you don't want to see you don't understand me you don't feel me or of course anyhow please specifically I want to connect okay and then what will this apply to me what information information on how she accepts you how she feels you how she responds to you and then you will manage with your steering wheel the relations with her and she accordingly will feel it and will start to manage herself compared to you until it will be one steering wheel it's truly you will manage these things together when I receive the feedback from her it, this is verbally right it has to, it's a verbal uh, process it's not verbal it's emotional it's like you are in a certain uh, uh, scale and you are her and you constantly want to be in balance 
and in each the ego rises and it balances himself compared to the other and this way each time we like this and we're getting a new every time and there is in this uh, uh, deep and endless developments truly that is such that you find there a whole symphony okay but now I want to learn in this trip something very special I understood the whole process what's not clear to me is raise to me the sensitivity to understand when will I this uh, less uh, conceding side it's not such nice side you said that it doesn't have to be completely a uh, whole love but sometimes also judgment no not sometimes this is to be all the time God's the judgment and the mercy what does that mean? I need to have both relations in the sa at the same time? Deen and Rachamim, love, uh, judgment, and, and mercy. That I, what does that mean? That I want to take advantage of her, as you know, on one hand. This is called Deen in me, the uh, judgment that she has to do what I would I demand from her, just like now, let's say, before the course, before everything. I know what I want to receive from her. And each time something different. Okay. This is called judgment with me. What is rachamim or mercy? That I can disconnect myself completely. I take into account what she wants from me. And try to build a pattern. How would I then relate to her? That I don't exist. That I am all for her. This is called mercy. Now, between the two, I need to find the, ba find the balance in that middle line. How do we find the balance? This is experience, a, pr a mutual process that we need to each teach each other. But by this, you start working with the new creation. The, human in you, the person in you that tries to be concerned with the other and feeling the other and coming to truly love thy friend as yourself, not just your wife, but you'll start feeling others. You will go out to the street, at work, at any place, you will all of a sudden start to feel from these exercises that you did with her that you can at every place connect to people and all of a sudden they start to be managed by you you can all of a sudden start to move them because you're relating to them in the middle line in the right line in the correct line as much as he is as much as you are and then automatically this happens all of a sudden you start to become balanced with the world you start to feel that you are managing the world because the middle line is truly that law of nature which exists inside of all of reality other than the human society which is called the create I created the inclination and now you are arranging you're arranging your ego in a balanced way I want to understand just like you are considerate you have to be considerate with others instead of building the line just towards her you're building a middle line for the general middle line and you're widening it okay I want to understand this middle line I understood that there is Dean uh, judgment and then there's Lachami mercy and I need to find this middle between them Dean you said is what is what I demand from the other there's there's me for in this purpose here there's my my partner and later we can send it to other things also the Dean so judgment is what I demand from the other this is very clear to me and, and mercy is the opposite mercy is when I disconnect myself completely for myself and what would she want to demand of you what she demands of you so there's okay so there's me and her it's, it's if you're receiving her in within yourself there's your ego and there's her ego. 
And that's it. So if you're supplying for your ego, it's called judgment. If you're supplying for her judgment, uh, for her ego, it's called mercy or or grace. How do you get them in line? That's called to become couple to come to coupling to, to come to connection. So there's one and then the other. How do you get closer? And how do you come to a connection? Well, no, but we're talking about my attitude. Right now, it's only a one-way kind of... It could be, right? Yeah, but when you're talking about one way, because you're not relating to her. If you're relating to the other, you can only do this according to how she... what she wants. I understood that this is the sensitivity that I have to feel what she wants. Now I have two reins like you drew. What One is what I want, and one is what she wants. This is the necessary uh, condition without which you cannot uh, start to work that each is willing to include by the other now you're saying it's fine a uh, middle between these two things between my demands and her demands when i find this this middle one how do i how do i balance it as much as you're willing to concede on your for yourself you can't have these two egos and supply and fill you need to lower here a little bit and raise a little bit here. Yeah. And from here, the initial question, where do you know, where, how do you know what the, bound, the, the boundary is here? The, the, but this is not complete love. No, no, sure, I have this, I have this. Pay attention. I have feedback here, there'll be feedback here. I also have bad, right? That's what you kind of thought we learned right now, yes? So how do you know what, what is the balance point? When you look, because you're driving in the car, where are you going? Are you getting closer to the goal? Are you seeing that you're getting close to each other? Are you seeing that her response is correct? You're trying as much as possible to enter, let's say, mercy, and you see, uh, to this point it's good, and, and more than that, not so much and her too in this way and then you start this way to manage yourselves now you're working with nature above nature you're starting to become humans you're becoming higher than what you have from your Christian when you're trying to concede and connect and all these good things that you talked about you talked about the word mercy the Hamim so you're efforting and you're efforting as much as you can which is what i'm supposed to do right i'm trying to effort as much as i can through these efforts are is there a point where you say you know according to the feedback that i received from my partner in this whole process i need to stop a little bit because you'll help him too you're not stopping for yourself oh that is enough it's too much and i'm doing this no you're saying that with too much of this attitude or this uh, relationship, I'm actually, I'm tripping her. I'm not allowing her to be able to overcome over my uh, good attitude and find that balance point. Uh, rather, she will be, it, it'll weaken her too much. And then you're helping her also to find that state. Also, by me stopping myself and doing things through love, I'm doing it from love, just like with children, that they you can't give them too much of a good attitude. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to corrupt them. Therefore, we need from the foundational point that we are beasts, we are animals, and we need to work on each on ourselves in order to become a human and, and then we need to do this with our family and then with the wide audience with everyone how do you define a good feedback from good feedback we feel each other I'm not talking about a goal that like in a car or you come to a certain goal we're in one goal we're driving together and we're holding the, the steering wheel together what does it mean what do I need to feel that we have common vessels, common tools, and both of us are managing these vessels together, that both my ego and her ego is below, are below, and 
the, our desire to bestow to each other is which is one is above us and together we stand like two scientists like two humans on our beasts night this picture can you invent for me a certain exercise to exercise specifically this picture I suggest to do workshops I want this can you invent a workshop about this that will get us a little closer to this picture that you just did now the workshop is simple uh, a, a common a mutual discussion today let's say we heard this explanation and we want to work about it today you need to talk about this you need to chew these things and that's it give me a question or two something leading it that will help us connect what is it called that one is included by the other in Din and Rahamim, in judgment and mercy or air grace I don't know how to answer this judgment is called my ego and Rahamim or uh, uh, mercy is her side and what is the middle side is that I want to be balanced between these two things meaning to influence as much as possible to the other in order to see the, the proper example from from them what is the proper example or proper response that she too is included by this now one second please say this without these words later I'll be confused between Din and Rachamim let me say this in simpler words same thing in simpler words that I'm sure that I will uh, understand so I'm afraid that we're going to confuse each other with uh, judgment and mercy in simple words if I am concerned only about my ego this is called left can we say left yeah left is no problem if I take into account her ego which I let's say go and fill to the end this is called right for me or left is Din and right is Hamim. We talked about this. Any house will also give this a connection. Now, left or Din is all of my demands that I would want for her to fill. Right, Hamim is all of her demands that she wants me to fill in her. It's clear that Din and Hamim, judgment and mercy, right and left, are in a clash with each other. When can they not clash, rather receive a full filling, either one being a slave to the other, that can only be a one directional thing, that I bought her, I beat her up, and that's it. She filled my desires, and that's it. Or on the uh, the opposite, there is a possibility that both of us will fill each other in a complete way, and even in addition, uh, in a bullet, six hundred and twenty times, we'll fill each other. How? By each being included by the ego of the other. And then what comes out is that we only need to work on the cooperation. As much as I can fill her ego, and as much as she can fill my ego, now we're here do we not go lo get get lost right to get lost is possible when we are in a common sensation of connection between us some balance point in which we exist in a on the on the pinnacle truly i didn't understand that uh, the point of connection, that, that drop of connection, the question was where not to get lost here in common bestowal, in common demand, in common balance, to not come out of balance, to not overdo it. So where not to get lost, not to get out of balance. And then the common point between us, which will be called coupling. Coupling is called where two are connected as together as one 
with a desire to be in common in bestow and for the sakes of common connection that we're receiving the ego of each other's as a means to fill him in a connection with the other and him too and then this point which exists between us it's called you know how it's called in, in parentheses amasach we're both connected in a mutual way to connect each to fill each other yes you said how not to come out of balance how do we get not get lost by feeling constantly each other as connected together what do we do to feel more and more then this will get new in us all the time the desires the thoughts this will we'll constantly go ahead with this we don't have to worry about this we'll never remain in one place no that's what I'm asking how you said that this point it assures that we don't the moment you reach this point of connection because it's constantly running no before it away this the creation of this point for what is it doing what do we have to do to create it from your good uh, desire and her good desire from the one who's dressed and from the one who's getting dressed it's the point of union what is this since you said here for when you when you feel the internality of each other all of a sudden I start to feel the heart and mind of hers and she of mine we start to connect in points that are deeper and inter more internal and we become like one and certainly this point is immediately uh, obscured and there's all of a sudden a certain escape and and concealment just like you want to uh, you know put the aim and for that point to constantly move and not specifically to hit the, 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 the spot itself but by you constantly moving and going around and you're you're getting a little bit more precision more desires more thoughts and a mutual effort and this is how you reach and the efforts are all the time exertion all the time work with your mind heart and minds all the time but what you add to this is impression uh, and something new is revealed here which is called adam or, or human which is this Adam and Eve together, man and woman. You start to discover here something, the, found, the, the internal spiritual foundation of this structure, which is called Adam. How can you check that you're observing this process from this mutual point and not from your personal point? That's a sensation you can't measure in any other way only in the feeling that you're feeling this way towards her and you're, she's feeling this way and you never felt this way before never all of a sudden it's such an internal feeling that you don't want to escape it it gives the feeling of livelihood so many times more than you ever had before ever because you already start to feel connected with the image that's before you and through this you acquire all you exited yourself with this now you can feel the whole world of this what do you need to do now so that this point won't escape to be constantly in this work with her together meaning now if I grabbed onto this point, now you need to try and be in a constant coupling. What does this mean? In the feeling of connection, in this internal feeling of connection, in which you're constantly connected. What is a feeling of a, a constant coupling? You will find this and you will feel this. It's not the physical bodily coupling. It's something that you will feel that her internality and your internality become one, truly one. What will happen in actuality? I will feel his feelings, not his, but both, but together. Together? Wait, one second. 
It's a new reality, which becomes from two, one. And in this connection together, you will feel a higher degree. We call this Bore, Creator. Become this degree, you once came to this world, and you were born, and you grew up, and all of a sudden, supposedly, by chance, you uh, connected and fell in love, and now from this point, you're returning to that same root. Let's say we felt this a little bit. And later, say it disappeared. What can we do now? We start the work ag uh, again uh, from, uh, from the beginning. Yeah, but we can work in many directions and, you know, and disperse. There are no other directions. You need to once again imagine to yourself what she wants from you, come to your ego, and once again to build yourself in such a way from these two lines and the middle line and so forth, and she too, the same thing. And then in the middle line, middle lines, you connect, and once again you come back to this. No, but I'm asking this way. After we taste it from this point again, for the first time, it can't be like uh, like a compass, like, I don't know, certainly. So how do we use this? No, uh, this is later, as you're experienced. For the meantime, no. In the meantime, you can kind of describe this picture as a simpler way, that not you're in two lines and in, in two ego and middle lines, and her for the two egos and the middle line, but her and you and the and the middle line between us. And then we, as we can see it ourselves, we enter, the, we get closer to the middle, and she concedes, and you get closer to the middle, and this way you describe it. Whatever is con convenient for you. I want to make uh, one more principle if it's okay with you we'll go to the next one number seven love is acquired through actions when one gives gifts to his friend each gift is like an arrow that hits the heart of the other and makes a hole in it in the end one arrow over the other the wall inside the others is uh, bursted through and there's a emotional feeling between it. in the connection between uh, couples what would you describe as a gift a gift could be that I go and I buy her a ring. Did you find out first that that's what she wants or needs? Maybe she wants, I don't know, new shoes. Maybe she wants, instead of that, uh, not shoes and not a ring, she wants to go with you for a vacation for a few days. A gift is that you're checking these stores for gifts I would burn them all it's for no reason it's nothing it's a million things that people don't need no on the contrary you need to find out what she wants and to bring it according to her desire this is called a gift a gift can be only an object no no to fill the desire can an attitude be considered a gift what can be gift be considered a gift and be felt as a gift if it comes from love that doesn't obligate in return I didn't understand just I just threw a sentence uh, if it comes from love then it's felt as a gift yes meaning it's I'm not obligating anyone by doing this I enjoy my action when not and don't demand in return anything he is giving me an opportunity to make a gift for him. In this, I feel the pleasure. I see my wife going to buy a gift for her grandson for, 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 the, uh, for her birthday. So she has to say thank you that he has a birthday. For this is for her a certain pleasure look and what, what does he need and maybe like this and maybe like that. Yes, there it's a little easier. No, this is an example out of love. The same thing with the, with the relationship between the couples. You need to be included in her desire. What would make her happy in such a way in the greatest happiness? Yes? And you go and you do it for her desire, to fill her desire. And in this, certainly you don't want anything. 
the, the creation is inner. You don't want anything from her. If you relate to her this way, that you demand in return, it's not a gift. It's called, a, it's like a, a trade. But a gift is called only this way. I love you. And therefore, I brought it for you. You don't owe me anything. Simply, this is my pleasure, which is different from the concession where there's mutuality. As I give and I accept uh, in return, a gift is above that. How do we use this mean of a gift in order to build between us a new life? What's the right way to use this means called a gift? Because gifts, you show her that you love her. That's it. You buy her. You acquire her for this. That's it. Well, we know that in our reality, a lot of times we use a not good use to this. Many times we do this also towards the uh, couple or to children. Because we're not bringing it from love. Rather from, because I want to cover it down. I did something not good. So bring her something like a gift. It's not a gift. It's a compensation. It's not called those gifts. What is truly to give a gift? Or if I say a kid, if you finish school, this and that, you'll get a gift. That's not a gift, that's a payment. That's it. So not a, a compensation and not a payment. How do I put myself inside and arrange myself? You show her this. That's it. Why did you buy? Why did you? From love. Express this, of course. If someone gives a gift to his friend, he must announce it. Why? Because there's a reason, and every other reason there is no reason. Because there's no reason here, you must announce it. Therefore, this gift without a reason awakens in him or on her behalf. Love in return. It's not a compassion. There's nothing here. There must be a response, and a response, and in response, there will be. Let's uh, script this. You come home. Bring me a gift, like you just described here. I need to know what you want. This is a preliminary stage. Of course, let's flow. Let's say you you figured out what I want discriminate what I want and I bring a gift and I make it in a way that I know I even tell you before I give you the gift I thought for a few days or a month until I even gathered money for this and I looked for this in order to bring you what I think you need and so forth and so forth and you make it bigger and bigger and bigger about how much you thought and how much you search and how much you want to raise her especially her desire and then you against this desire of hers you bring her a feeling and this is complete love without any calculation and nothing this is my pleasure was that I don't know that it's too bad it was over how much the search and the uh, these things brought me pleasure because I wanted to fill you this is called love, uh, a gift and then what does she feel after? <laughs> there's a continuation here there's the walls here it hurts the the heart every gift is like an arrow that hits the heart of the other and, make, and makes a, a penetrate this is when we talked about the other being an egoist and he doesn't want to receive anything from me and anyway is in a clash this is towards foreigners but if we're talking about your, your partner that's already something easier and therefore to start with the family is much easier than in other places meaning the walls there aren't such uh, so stiff, stiff and difficult to so start with your families well our time has ended in this atmosphere of gifts thank you very much Rav Lightman thank you very much uh, Nitsa thanks for being with us good luck and uh, farewell <laughs>